racing across the sea at breakneck speeds. Even in training, the Volvo Ocean Races teams take things to the limit. Among the sailors battling to shave off seconds in heavy seas is British skipper Dee Kafari. To be out on the open ocean is a very privileged place to be, seeing nature in its own environment and then trying to harness that power of nature to make it work for you. I, I like the lack of distractions and the focus there is on actually sailing the boat. Kafari was the first woman to sail solo and non-stop around the world in both directions. And she's not the only female participant in this year's race. 18 women will be taking part, thanks to the introduction of a new rule. The more women on board, the bigger the size of the team allowed. The idea is to open more doors to women at the sport's highest level. The level of the female sailors has not been allowed to get to the top level. Um, because they've not been able to sail with the best teams. Um, and I wanted to, on that for our side, help the sport and help the best female sailors go to the very top. All seven teams taking part in the Volvo Ocean Race have decided to include women. So this year, there will be mixed crews fighting to win what is billed as the toughest sailing race in the world. Some of the guys who have never sailed with women before are realizing that it's not such a bad thing. And actually, it can be a very nice environment to sail in. I think a mixed team brings out the best of the girls. It makes them raise their game. And it also kind of calms the testosterone of the boys a little. So it ends up being a very nice environment. The subtlety that women maybe have because they have less strength, they have a little bit more subtlety and more finesse in a way, um, is sometimes an advantage uh, for women. Most of the women participating in mixed teams this year sailed in the last Volvo Ocean Race, but the all-female team had the odds stacked against them. The sport of sailing and the Volvo Ocean Race in particular is an experience sport. The more hours you sail, the more hours you spend on the ocean, the better you will become as a sailor. 25. At first, the big names in men's sailing were reluctant to take female crew members on board. They were all waiting to see how the women performed in the preliminary in-port race in Alicante before the crews put to sea proper next Sunday. Afterwards, the male sailors congratulated their female counterparts. They do very well. They have plenty of experience and, you know, they learn a lot and now we are very, very happy that they, they are adding a lot to the team. Now we've got some, some girls that have got a lot of experience and, uh, you know, are really good at yachties and, and really good at their jobs. And now we, um, you know, we feel like we've, we've done, we got pretty lucky with the girls we've got. This year, everything's changed at the Volvo Ocean Race for both the women and the men. Their teamwork improves with every hour that they sail together. As soon as we step on the boat or when we are together as a team, there are no differences. And uh, we are one group of sailors and we just want to sail, make the boat go really fast. So we have the same goal. To take the trophy and to do that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we want to do, to do well. And so I'm hoping that now this has kind of been a watershed moment, if this race can show that mixed teams work and in the future, sailors will get picked on ability, not just gender. Now the crews have some 45,000 exciting but grueling nautical miles ahead of them. Whichever boat crosses the line first, one thing's already decided. For the first time, women will be among the winners of the Volvo Ocean Race.